Reclaimed is the podcast about the woman's journey of reclaiming her power through somatic work, breath work, plant medicine, and conversations. I am Kyla Gagnon, and this is Reclaimed. Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back to the conversation. Um, I wanted to come on today and talk about reclaiming your power, of course. Uh, as the name of the podcast is such. And what I'm realizing is that maybe isn't the most clear statement to people and it means something different to everyone as it should. And so when I speak about reclaiming your power, what I'm referring to is, is coming home to your sense of self. And I often, when I speak about that, I, I, my hands come together, like in this line, like if you're watching the video version of this, this like center line in the body, it's like coming back to that anchored, grounded, honest part of you that is making decision and living a life from your authority, your sovereign choices, not that which you've been raised with or that you are living in society with. And this is really a big deal. It's really a big deal. It's not floofy spiritual, like coming back to your yourself and, and knowing your true self. It is that, but not in the context of floofy spirituality, which I see all over the internet. And, and I've, you know, quite likely been a part of that piece of, of, <laughs> Uh, just that I've just been a part of it, but it, there's more truth in it that there's more like it's, it's more tangible. It's a real thing and it's really important. And so the reasons why I think it's really important is if we don't have a clear understanding and an embodiment of, which means we're actually living it, we're not just talking about it. When we have a clear embodiment of it and we know it, like we know the color of our eyes, like we know it, you, we can't, we don't fall for shit. We don't get pulled into situations that aren't right for us. We aren't saying yes. Okay. Sure. When we really want to be saying, oh, mm, I don't think so. And when we have a strong sense of self, we are, we're related, we're, we're coming into relationships with people who actually are right for us, who actually are showing up the way that they need to show up for us rather than, you know, falling for all of the, the signs that are actually red flags that we've been ignoring because we don't actually have this sense of self-connection. We don't have this sense of this is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is what I represent. This is what I believe in. This is what I don't believe in. And, and, you know, we're raised in situations. We're raised in families with dynamics and their own beliefs. And that becomes ours. It just does. It just does. That's how it goes. And it's up to us when we become grown to actually reflect and do, do these beliefs actually make sense to me? Do I actually agree with my parents that this political party is the way to go? Mm, I don't know, actually. Or do I, yeah, do I believe my family? Do I, do I still fall in line with their beliefs around what's acceptable in someone's personal life or their sexuality, right? So many, uh, I'll say of us, I'm in my 40s. And anyone in their kind of 30s, 40s, 50s and older, we were raised in houses where sexuality was like, oh, I don't know, you know, not a lot of households were open to various types of, of um, sexual preferences. If I think back on my grandfather, like it's a hard no, anything outside of a man and woman. And I could have grown up believing and trusting that that was truth and that becoming my story. I 
thankfully didn't. And I don't believe that to be my story. I think you can love and make love with whoever you want. I think that's really beautiful that we have that choice. But you see where I'm going. It's like so many of us are, are raised in families. We are in school systems, communities where the dialogue and the, the limitations, the fears, the expectations, the, the route in which your life unfolds is all the same. And if we don't pause to reflect on, does this all actually feel good to me? Do I actually, would I, is this the hill I would die on? If we don't stop and actually reflect on that, I don't believe we have any sense of self-power. I don't believe that we're making decisions from a place of power. I don't believe that we are living life from a place of power. I believe if we are not checking in with ourselves around what is actually important and true to us, we're, we're going to, we're, what's the word I even want to use? I just think it's kind of dangerous. We're going to, you could fall for everything. You fall for anything and everything. If you're not anchored in, you're just going to get lost in the wind. Storm comes through and you're, you're, you're gone, right? If you don't have your own values and morals and beliefs and desires and truths and ability to look at the old stories and like, "Mm, I don't know, I've been saying that thing for a long time, but that, that doesn't feel right for me. It's having those inner questions and those inner conversations where we can start to look at how we've been behaving, stories we've been telling ourselves, things we've been saying just to say them, conversations we allow ourselves to be part of, relationships we allow ourselves to stay in. When we can really stop and reflect on all of those and decide, wait a minute, those actually weren't authentic to me. Those don't feel good. That's not right. And then choose differently and stand in that. Anchor yourself down, be rooted and like solid in your beliefs without, now this is the, this is the piece that can be challenging without caring what the other people who you were in these stories and dialogues with think. You might go against the family grain. You might be the outcast in your community or your friend circle. And that's okay. One of the greatest problems or, or, you know, yeah, dangers that we face is, is being someone who has vision for themselves, who has dreams, who has their own thoughts that are different maybe than the people you're spending time with. One of the biggest dangers is staying in circles of people who are lowering your desires, your energy, your frequency, your dreams. That is dangerous. That keeps you in the same loop. And so if you have ideas, beliefs, stories, dreams, truths that you feel are, are to be shared and the people that you're spending your time with don't support those, agree with those, and they're holding you back, Catch the next bus out. Find the people who are like, hell yeah, let's do this. I support that 100%. They exist. They exist everywhere. They exist. If you remain stuck in the stories of your family, even though they don't feel true to you anymore, or stuck in the stories of the belief patterns that you used to be in, maybe you've spent your whole life in, but you're like, this doesn't feel good. If you stay there, Life is going to feel hard. I guarantee it because you're fighting, you're resisting the truth inside of you. We all have it. I guarantee that even if you agree with and believe 99% of what your family raised you to believe in, there's something that you feel slightly different about. And it's standing in that power. It's speaking that truth that changes things. And when we can come to this deeper sense of self, because that's what this is, it's coming into a deeper relationship with yourself, understanding who you are and like, hmm, how you show up in this world. When we come to that place, everything changes. You call in relationships, friendships, partnerships, work relationships, 
dynamics with people that actually support you, that actually light you up and move you forward, you find yourself in spaces where communication feels a lot easier because you're not coming from this uncentered, wavery, frantic kind of place. You're a solid, sovereign adult. You're grown and you act grown. You know, we find ourselves in, in realities that before we maybe couldn't because we weren't owning our truth. And so the very first time I realized this, because I absolutely thought that I had always been living from a place of strong sense of self, it was through a breathwork practice, a few breathwork practices truly, and then the conversations that unfolded after the breathwork practices that really shine, shone, <laughs> shined, shone a light on how disconnected from self I actually was. And so I really encourage you to explore these, these opportunities. If there's um, a breath practice available to you with someone you trust and you know is you know educated and capable of holding you in this, try it, try it. And maybe it's not breath work, maybe it's medicine work, or maybe it's I don't know. I don't know. Ecstatic dance or something that actually like brings you into a closer sense of self connection to your body. But for me, it was breath work. It was breath work. And now I'm able to tap into it through other modalities. But for me, it was coming back into the body. And that's where we start to really deepen the relationship to self is in the body, right? So much of us are living in our head. So much of us especially women trying to <laughs> do everything and check all the boxes. And that leaves us really deep in our masculine and that action taking go, 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 go and disconnected from our body, which ultimately leaves us disconnected from the feminine, which ultimately leaves us disconnected from that stronger sense of self, the truth, the truth of us is inside. And when we spend so much time in the busy thinking, thinking, doing, trying to keep up with, trying to please everybody, trying to make sure we're not ruffling feathers, we're disconnected, we're disembodied, and it's a hell of a mess. It's a hell of a mess. And so I want to invite you, if you have not yet jumped into a breath practice with me, please, if you're able to come in person, oh my gosh, come in person. I host them every month in Victoria. And if you can't come in person, I host two every single month online inside of my membership. Now, the membership has been closed from mid-July into today. <laughs> today is September 16th, 2024. And it's kind of a very exciting day. I've rebranded the whole website. We are now just kylagagnon.com and the membership is Breathe with Kyla. The doors to this are now open and they're going to remain open for one week. So you have until the end of this week to join us inside of Breathe with Kyla. There are, of course, some fun options to upgrade to VIP or you can get some one-on-one -on -one coaching every single month with me. And you have options of month to month or all the way up to a uh, full year, wherever you want to start. I am so happy to have you. Links for everything that I offer. If you're listening to this or watching this after September 23rd and the doors have yet again closed, Links to every possible way that you could work with me right now are linked below in the show notes. There's a wait list for the membership if the doors are closed and you'll be first to know when they are opening. So here for the reclamation of self-power by coming back to a deeper sense of self. And for me, and I'm only speaking for me, this came to me through Conscious Connected Breathwork. I love you and I can't wait to breathe with you. I'm running a free event September 19th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. This is the Breathe with Kyla Foundations, and it's a perfect place for you to come if you have questions about breath work, if you have questions about the Breathe with Kyla membership, if you're already inside the membership and you have questions about the VIP upgrade or the mastermind, this is all going to be covered inside of the event. Of course, we're going to do a breath work practice together, just a short, sweet one. Uh, link is in the show notes. Of course, would love to see you there again, September 19th, 7 PM breathe with Kyla foundations.